you know. So what happens, I think what happens during the day, particularly in summer, they're off, they're off deep. Deep being 15 to 30, 40 feet, if you can find a place like that. There are places around Carolina Inlet um, on the waterway side, you know, there's places in there that are 35 and 40, well, not about 35 feet, about deep as you'll find it there. And they're hard to fish because it's, there's a lot of current. And then the snow's cut. There's, that, that'd be, you know, 20 feet deep, 15 feet, and end up on a ledge. It goes seven to nothing. And you see, most of the guys that, that I see fishing, I'll be fishing out right on the edge of the ca ch channel of Carolina, uh, say, snow's cut. The guys that, that actually come in, and most people find, they'll fish inside of me. They'll fish, there's still room. They're, they're up there casting at the trees, and they got that bass fishing mentality. They got to throw at something. And then, but what you can, what you what you want to do is what's on the water. These fish are on the bottom. They're not up in trees, and they're not like a they're not like a bass. Except I think with shade, you've got a place that's a shady bank that that'll work. But a bright sunlight. <coughs> Some guys even say that they don't like to look up into the sun. That that's another reason they go back. This they do. And um, because of that, the typical rig that everybody uses. I've got one here. 99% of the people that are fishing will use this little mess right here. That's an ounce and a half, ounce and a half egg sinker, and they'll have a kale hook on it. The problem with this, if you ever get into any kind of current of all, at all, which that's what you're looking for, you wait. Flounder don't get up and move around for the most part. They're sitting there. You've got to have something bringing it to them, and what brings them to them is current. Bring the bait to them. So what they'll do with this, they'll cast this out, and it'll come back at an angle like that, and everything it hits, it gets hung on. I mean, everything. It's that they stay hung up. I watch guys that go out to Johns Creek, which is an offshore place off Carolina Beach. It's just 35 feet of water. It's, they say it's coral down there. I believe them because every now and then you bring some of it up. And I just watch guys tie rigs all day. It looks like a damn quilting bee going over there. There's four or five of them there all the time. I take 16 rods with me, so i, I got to break 16 before I start tying knots. But the, uh, if you've got three people fishing and nobody ties knots, you can get to that fairly quick. But a lot of guys spend a lot of time out there, productive time, tying knots. And they do that because, say, the structure would be set one of these chairs out here. I know I'm jumping all over the place, so I just kind of, like I said, we'll make it up as we go along here. We'll bring this chair here. And we're out there, and this is the ocean. And the only thing out here is this, something gets a coal head right here. You're going to throw out in this little rig right here, and you got to let a lot of line out to get it to the bottom. It, it, it's won't, it won't fall straight. It'll fall straight down, but the current's going to take it away from you, maybe back at that wall. And you say, well, we're covering more ground. Yes, you are. But unfortunately, the flounder are laying right here. And the time you get here, you're hung up. And you're not, you're not going to spend much time on where you're going to be. What I suggest to you that we're going to do, we're going to drift or anchor up and fish with a heavier lead, and we're going to fish it straight up and down. We're going to find this on our chart, and then we're going to mark it. We're going to mark it with a buoy. I'll show you that in a second. And then we're going to fish straight up and down. Okay. There's several ways of doing it. Anchor, straight up and down, put three ounces of lead down it, it goes straight down. We can drift, we can power drift. There's, there's drifting is drifting. You will go figure out which way the current's running. It may take you a couple passes. We're going to mark this. I use a, I use a, um, I use a duck to mark. Try to keep the rights of these guys off me as long as I can. You know, about 10 o'clock in the morning, I have to get the Labrador retrievers washed <laughs> up, and it starts to collar something. Wear them like this. <laughs> Don't understand that at all. Now we got this duck floating over here. Here's the bottom. We got this duck. We got three pound weight on the bottom of this. This is riding on the top. Got it painted to look like a seagull, just to keep them off of me a little bit. If I happen to have to catch one, they they'll just they they see what you're doing, but they don't understand that duck. That duck or one that's like it's been fed. It's had Labrador receivers jump on it, try try to get in the water with it, and you'll see more seagulls will come to it. It actually works as a decoy. You'll have three or four seagulls sitting there around that stupid bird, and they look at it and they can't figure it out. But what I was going to suggest now, now we got our bait, and now we're going to fish it up and down like this. We're going to, we're going to probe it around like this. We're going to bounce it around. But trying to spend as much time in this area right here. We don't want to spend any time out here. And then if, if we're drifting, this is, this is a simple thing, but it saves a lot of time. And everybody does, everybody has to think about this. So we've got two or three people in the boat. 
the first thing I want to do, I want to turn the boat long ways because I'm not good enough to go over this, over this every time. But I'm thinking that if, if, if I got a 24 foot boat and we're all fishing this way, that maybe somebody will get lucky and we'll get the right spot. Because the divers tell me and, and the spearfishers tell me when, they're de when they get these flounder down there, they're laying nose to tail. They are literally laying nose to tail down there. And they're maybe in a 20 foot area. And then the rest of the rest of the ocean is just desert. There's nothing there. They they're setting nose to tail on these things, and then they're they're spearing them like that. So, and I've done it before, particularly at Johns Creek. When you go out there, you can catch four or five fish just as fast as you can put put it back on that spot. And it, and then 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 it's over. You can't do anything. Something changed. Something you stirred up too much trouble or whatever it is. I don't know. But that you can catch. It'd be, it's incredible how fast you can catch them. It's also incredible how long it takes you to find that spot some days, <laughs> or days, multiple days. But the uh, when you but I can't stress when you once you catch a flounder, even if like it's not so much like it snows cut because that is a very different kind of thing. That's that's a, that's high current, up and down rocks, trees, mainly cuts in the water. I mean cuts in the bottom, and that, that's a different thing. But try to if you catch a a, a bait offshore. Like, like say that down at Yo Pine Beach, something like that. Get back on that spot, and everybody, the macro fishermen, they're smart. They can get on their GPS, and they can always find their spot. Not really. See, we got to be exactly on the spot. A, a, a king macro fisherman doesn't have to be exactly on the spot. He's trolling his baits out. He's got a you know a 20 foot spread of baits out there, the riggers or whatever. But his fish is swimming all the time. A macro has to swim all the time. The fish we're fishing for does not swim much at all. So we have to be back on the spot. Macro fish can get, generally get, just get in the ballpark and you put a nice big fat bait out there, but everything works right, he'll come get it. Flounder ain't coming and getting it. He's dug in, he's, um, unless you shine a bright light in his face, you won't see. But the, uh, that, that type thing. Um, but the, like I said, the problem with this rig right here for me, and there's tons of people that fish with this rig all the time, you got a lot of slack in the line. A lot of guys that are starting out will stay hung up a lot. <coughs> and a bite is a little spongy in this because you got so much slack in your line. Well, the way I'm fishing it, if you've got 35 feet of line, say 35 feet of water, you only got 40 feet of line out there. A little bit, of, a little bit between the water and you, and you're just sitting there popping it up and down. You're just popping it up and down. Just pick it up, and lay it down. Pick it up, and lay it down. We don't have to do anything crazy. Just pick it up and move it around. Actually, I call them. You get hung if you don't stay in the structure there. But the uh, just pick it up. Lay it down, pick it up, lay it down, and work all around that area there as much as you can when, as the boat moves. This is getting up here, guys. The, um, so what I'm going to suggest that we do is take three ounce lead and we're going to pin it to the bottom. It's going to be very straight down. If you've got three guys or gals on the boat, one trick you can use to, to kind of help everybody out a little bit, because people that don't fish, they tend to won't let the line, I don't feel the bottom, but they just keep letting line out. And that gets to working against you. The more line you got out there, the more it wants to pick up. And they just keep doing it. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll pin the first person on the front with a four ounce lead, put a three ounce lead in the middle, and I'll use a two ounce lead, because I can let mine out, because I've got, because I, I halfway know what, try to know what I'm doing, keep up with. And that way everything's going to drift a little different, but we're going to be farther away. We, that, that minimizes tangling each other, and that, that way, by, by, this, this, by this doing it, they don't have a clue that, that, that they're fishing different things, this, that, and the other. But if you nail them down, they'll, they'll drop straighter. The trick to it is drop them straight down. If that doesn't work, drop a four ounce lead on them, and they go like that. And everybody said, well, you can't feel the fish if you got a four That's crazy. You can feel the fish. He's, we got it on a slip. He'll pull it through. You catch a five pound flounder, that four ounces of lead is not going to impact what you're doing whatsoever. It just, it just won't. It's just, a, it's, it's just a good thing. Um, one thing you can do, talking now, now I'm out at a place like Johns Creek or Yopon, something like that. One thing you can do to make matters a lot easier, when you do get hung, and we're not casting, we're dropping our lines. The way we start fishing is we drop our lines straight down. Casting is asking to get hung. That's all that is. That's going to increase the angle out there, and it's going to increase the We want to be able to... Oh, let me get this. So this is another thing. If you get your crew lined up, when they feel the structure, I'm bringing the boat up. I see it on the bottom. I use a flasher a lot because they, um, I mean, it's old, it's old school stuff, but they, 
they tell you exactly when you're hitting it. They tell you right now that you're, buying, you're coming up on something where, in my mind, a chart has to go a ways before you start picking it up. A flasher will immediately tell you that, it's, that, that, that you're there. So what I'll do there, I'll bump the boat back. And then when, when you come in here and you, you, okay, I'm getting hung. What does everybody do? They pull to the front. They automatically, instinctively pull to themselves. And what you should do is pull it away. You, okay, I banged up against this. I feel it. Trouble's happening here. Just pull it away and then maybe pick it up and then try to set it down. Find you another place you can set it back down. Now, if you feel, and you can feel this. You only got 30 feet of line out here. You feel you're sitting on top of something hard. That's not where he's laying anyway. Try to find you a soft spot to where to go back down to where it needs to be. But if you'll just have you guys, and they, it takes a while to get onto it, pull. Don't, don't pull this way. Like the boat, we're drifting this way. Here we are. Don't pull it this way. You just pull it straight into the into the stuff. Pull it this way, and let's try to work around it. If I see you're having, if you're having problems, I know the front of I know the front of the boat is on the spot. It's on the spot. So I'm gonna back the boat up anyway. I'm gonna try to go backwards on it like that. So it's gonna try to drift it on out and get it back in. We'll just stay here a minute and like that. Because sometimes you get in these places, all three of you hang up, and ain't a thing you can do about it. And it, and that coral will rip rip everything you got to shreds. Another thing that I've noticed that. When you, when you do get hung, you come back up, your lead's all scratched up, which told, tells me it was the lead that's hung up, not the hooks, it's the lead. So what I started doing is taking my lead, and I would take it, I may have to put my glasses on to get through this. Young people are better at this. <laughs> when does it end? <laughs> the, the, uh, take your paper clip. <laughs> yeah, this is really not that hard to do. Cheap, I mean. <sighs> take your paper clip, put it on there, and now we're home. We got 12 pound test line. Pull it and break the paper clip, the straight paper clip out. Come back up, put your another lead on. It's one of the best things I've come, you don't have time to more rigs. It is when you pull on it hard, it's gonna straighten out like that, fly off, just like that. If you do a lot of this kind of fishing, that's worth coming to the meeting for right there. It's, uh, it just makes a tremendous difference on how much time, because most of you guys are not gonna carry 16 rods. You're gonna take four or five rods with you. And it ain't gonna take but a minute to go through these things drifting. We'll talk about anchoring in a bit. So you take this, that that will save you a lot of time. While we're doing some guys that that are even cheap so they'll take a spark plug. It's probably not the most environmentally friendly way of doing it. They fish with spark plugs, they weigh approximately two and a half ounces. I mean, I put them on a postal scale, that's what they weigh. And they put them on paper clips. And you just drop them down like that, and you don't care if you lose your spark plug. You, oh, you've got to bend the electrode down. And this, now this is your lead. It feels a little weird, but it works, you know, like that. And uh, um, that's just, just another way of doing it. <laughs> the, uh, the jazz things up a little bit. Now we're still fishing straight up and down. We're still, we're still drifting or power drifting. The only thing between drifting and power drifting, drifting you're just letting the wind blow you. You adjust the boat constantly to where the, the guy that's going to catch the fish is the guy that's running the boat because he's the one that's, that's, that's watching that bottom. The other guys don't have a clue. Only time, only time when they get in the bottom is when they feel it and if they do everything right, they'll pull back and we, we, can, keep, we can continue our thing on. You can't get aggravated about people getting hung up because if you're not getting hung up, not catching lizard fish, not catching uh, oyster toads, you're, you're probably in the wrong place. That's the curse, is oyster toads. Start, you start catching bluefish, 